Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You are watching South Asia Newsline and have the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday the 21st of October. India and China arrive on border patrolling pact to resolve conflict. Pakistan passes constitutional amendment bill capping term of Chief Justice. And come back to face justice if you have courage, Bangladesh Attorney General tells Hasina. And now for all the details. India and China have arrived on a patrolling arrangement along their disputed border and it can lead to disengagement and resolution of a conflict that began in 2020, Indian Foreign Secretary Vikram Misri said on Monday. News of the pact comes on the eve of Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to Russia for the BRICS summit, where he could hold talks with China's president on the sidelines. Ties have been strained since 2020 when clashes between their troops left 20 Indian and 4 Chinese soldiers dead. Earlier this month, India's army chief said New Delhi wants the status on the frontier in the western Himalayas to be restored to its pre-April 2020 position when the standoff began and the situation will remain sensitive until then. The two sides have resolved the low-hanging fruits and now need to address difficult situations General Upendra Duedi said, adding that there was positive signalling from the diplomatic sides and the execution on the ground was dependent on military commanders of the two countries. As many as seven migrant workers of an infrastructure company, including a doctor, were killed and five others were injured in a terror attack in Gandharbal district of India's Shaman Kashmir on Sunday. Security forces have cornered off the area. Reports suggest the terrorists on Sunday evening indiscriminately fired at a camp which housed workers of a company engaged in constructing a tunnel on the Srinagar Leh National Highway. The National Conference President, Farooq Abdullah, whose party formed a government in the Union Territory recently, has condemned the terror attack and conveyed to Pakistan's leadership that if they want good relations with India, they need to put an end to terror and let people of the valley live with dignity and succeed. He vowed that Kashmir will never become Pakistan. I want to say this to the Pakistan government. If they want to be friends with India, then stop it. Kashmir will not become Pakistan. It will not become, it will not become. Give us a blessing and give us a blessing. Give us a blessing and give us a blessing. Meanwhile, the son of a doctor, one of the seven people killed in the terror attack, expressed grief and said that his father wanted him to become a doctor as well, but his death has shattered his dream. My father said, I will make you an IS officer. But when I heard this story, I thought that I will make you an IS officer. तो मुझे लगा कि मेरा ये खाब जो है शायद अब पूरा नहीं होगा क्योंकि अब मैं क्या करूं अब मैं अपने आप को संभालूं अपने फैमिली मेंबर्स को संभालूं मैं भी इन बच्चों जैसा हूं अब इन बच्चों ये बच्चे खेलते कूदते हैं मैं क्या करूं मुझ पर मुसीबत आ पड़ी है Amid the tensions between New Delhi and Ottawa, India's High Commissioner to Canada, Sanjay Verma, hit out at the Canadian government and said Prime Minister Justin Trudeau had wrecked bilateral political ties. Verma and five other diplomats were called back by the Indian government over security concerns after a Canadian government alleged they were persons of interest in killing of Khalistani terrorist Hardeep Singh Nijjar. Talking to Canadian media outlet CTV News, Verma accused Trudeau government of failing to take action against the Sikh separatist movement operating in Canada as he highlighted the 27 outstanding extradition requests by India over the years. We only warn the Canadian regime of the day to understand my core concern and try to act on that sincerely rather than being bedfellows with those who are trying to challenge Indian sovereignty and territorial integrity, he was quoted as saying. 
He further criticized Trudeau over the handling of investigation into Nijersky link and called the allegations against Indian diplomats politically motivated and accused him of relying on intelligence and not evidence. On the basis of intelligence, if you want to destroy a relationship, be my guest, Verma said. Relations between the two countries have been largely lukewarm for over a year after Trudeau alleged India's involvement in Nijersky link. The situation worsened earlier this week when Canada labelled India's High Commissioner and other diplomats as persons of interest in the investigation of Nijar's death. In response, India withdrew its envoy and other diplomats from Ottawa and expelled six Canadian diplomats, including the acting High Commissioner Stuart Wheeler, downgrading the diplomatic mission to secretary level. And amid political manoeuvrings, Pakistan has passed the controversial 26th Constitution Amendment Bill in the Upper House of the Parliament, capping the Chief Justice's tenure to three years. Also known as the Constitutional Package, the bill aims to debilitating the powers of the independent judiciary. The Constitutional Amendment was passed with a two-thirds majority. 255 out of 366 parliamentarians voted in the favour of the bill. The opposition PTI party leaders did not take part in the voting as they said the idea of the executive picking a chief justice and a parliamentary committee determining which superior court judge can hear the constitutional matters are both direct attacks on judicial independence. However, Prime Minister Shaiba Sharif has called the amendment an example of national solidarity and consensus. Meanwhile, police in Karachi detained several Baloch activists blocking their march to the press club as they wanted to hold a protest against enforced disappearances in Balochistan. A report. Police on Sunday detained several Baloch activists as they tried to march towards the Karachi press club to protest against cases of enforced disappearances in Balochistan. The Baloch Yagjati committee in a statement said that all roads leading to the press club were closed and police personnel did not allow the protesters to proceed further. The rice group accused. The police resorted to bait and charge to disperse the protesters and took away several of them, including their central deputy organizer, Wahab Baloch. Activist Samideen Baloch told media they had planned the protest as a large number of persons had gone missing in parts of Balochistan and Karachi recently. Human rights organizations allege that ethnic Baloch people have long been targets of ethnic profiling and abductions by the Pakistani state. Balochistan has experienced decades of unrest due to demands for more political freedom and control over the region's resources. Bangladesh Attorney General Mohammad Asad Zaman has said that former Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina would return to Bangladesh to face trial if she has the courage. The International Criminal Tribunal in Bangladesh last Thursday issued an arrest warrant for Hasina, citing her alleged involvement in mass killings during violent protests that erupted earlier this year. Talking to reporters on Sunday, the Attorney General said he hoped that Hasina would remain true to her convictions and it would be in her best interest to return and face trial. The student-led movement against public sector job quotas escalated into one of the deadliest unrest, resulting in over 700 deaths. The violence ultimately forced Hasina to flee to India on 5th of August and the formation of an interim government. Till date, more than 60 complaints have been filed against Hasina and other leaders of her Awami League party, alleging forced disappearances, murder and mass killings. A Nepali court on Sunday remanded former Home Minister Rabi Lamichane into custody for six days for further investigation on charges of cooperative fund embezzlement and organized crime. Former Deputy Prime Minister and Chairman of Rashtriya Swatantrata Party, Lami Chane was arrested by Nepal's Crime Investigation Bureau from his party office in Kathmandu and was subsequently taken to Pokhara, where he was presented before the court. Lami Chane, along with 13 others, is accused of being involved in misappropriation of funds from the Pokhara-based Surya Darshan Savings and Credit Cooperatives. His arrest followed a parliamentary probe which indicted him and other to the embezzlement of millions of rupees from the cooperative. Lamichane has, however, denied the allegations. 
In a post on Facebook before his arrest, Lamit Shah ne vented his ire against the government and accused the Oli administration of misusing state power to protect its party leaders facing corruption charges. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.